Welcome back guys, this is Rez and today we're going to talk about if statements and why it matters. But before we go through that, just a reminder that these videos are kind of focused on my students or actually a bit accelerated version of what I usually do. So I'm not going into too much details and there's not too much practical stuff going on at this point. But if you're following along, just notice that um, try to understand as best as you can. And eventually we'll do a bit more practice, a bit more problems, and so forth, so on. And eventually one day I will we'll make a longer version video. Until then, it's just a bit accelerated. Now, getting into this, uh, last video we talked about inputs and outputs. In this video, we're going to talk about if statements. So, the whole point of if statements is to be able to branch out. What I mean by that is to be able to have two different options and only run one option depending on the case. And we do this with this if statement, right? If you put in your statement inside the parentheses, so if question here is true, we will do whatever's inside the curly braces, right? The same way we did whatever's inside the curly braces for our main application, we would do that for any question that you pose here. Now, how to pose these questions, we take these variables or we take a user's input or anything that we stored and we say, well, is it bigger than this? Or is it is, so it's just looking at our types. Is it bigger than this or equal to that, smaller than this, right? If it's a character, is it this specific character I'm looking for? Is it not this character? Uh, if it's a string, is it the same string or is it a bit different if it's blah, blah, blah and so forth so on. And even tr and booleans are the easiest one. If the boolean is true, do it. If the boolean is false, do that, right? Because in the end, the if statement, the question that you pose, is going to give you back a true or false. So that expression that's put in there, whatever it is, if it gives you back true, you'll do what's in here. So do what's in here if true. And if it's false, it'll just... Don't do this part. Simple as that. So let's do this. So easiest one we could do is, you know what? Just to put if true. So if true, do this. Well, this question already has the answer, so it's always going to be true. Right? So let's just put a, you know what? Let's just delete all of this. Okay. So we're going to have an empty output. And over here, we're just going to put console.writeLine to see what's going on. And I am an if statement. All right. Now, if we run this, and you could see it says I am an if statement, right? So, what would happen if we would say actually, well, here is actually false. Right? Nothing will be displayed on the screen because it's false. If the statement is false, it's not going to do what's inside of it. Right? So let's do a bit more. So let's say if the whole number, sorry for all these, I don't know how to suppress it on this uh, Mac version. Let's see if I click here. No, that just goes to issues. Anyway, um, so let's say, let's say if I set whole number, is bigger than three do something right so we could see that it's nine at this point and we do some stuff here and it becomes something else so actually let's make it bigger than one because i think we changed the floating number which is 3.4 so if we run this we get inside right because we're bigger than that if we go back here and we say hey it needs to be bigger than five notice that by the end when it reaches this line whole number is actually three point well it's just three because it's an integer so if we run this you'll notice it never gets hit because whole number is less than right now if you notice that this gives you back a true or false answer and that's what we're looking for whenever we're doing something in here so we have Bigger than, we could also do bigger than or equal to. Actually, sorry, it's on the other side. Okay. 
uh, we have uh, smaller than or equal to we have just smaller than we have also not equal right or if we're looking for a specific number equal we do double sign of equal okay so this is a comparison compared to this which says assign the value on the right to the thing on the left all right so this is the basics of if statements so if this is true you do whatever's in the body if it's false you just continue on right so console dot right line continue on so this line will get hit whatever the case is because it's outside my if statement so if we just run it continue on gets hit but our whole number is three so it doesn't get this statement as true so it doesn't do this part okay um let's see now going a bit more complex we could do another thing which is to say it's either going to be this path or this path that's going to be running and that's the else statement so if this is true do this else do that right so it's pure english so if the whole number is equal to five do this part else or otherwise right so this would be otherwise and only if the statement or let's say the question question statement is false do this and I added an extra parenthesis console dot right line I am else okay so in this case we created two different paths that only one side could be hit so only one path you could take and when you took that path eventually they go back and they align again right so you're forking at this point where you're saying i'm either going to go left or going to go right so let's say this is left and this is right and then afterwards they both join up to continue on so if we notice this was false so our else should get a hit right so we're going to run this and you notice i am else is hit okay closing that so let's say if this was three which would make this true I am in the F statement so right and then again it continues on so either this is true or false you'll continue on but you only do one of these whatever is inside the curly braces okay so let's get a bit even deeper in this well what if I wanted to create more forks in the road well this is where the else if comes in okay now this should the if should always be at the beginning okay well the first thing you do beginning the else should always be at the end so i'm pressing tab and then it does that for it. end of statements or if statements okay and inside that we could have else if statements and we could have as many as we want in there so if whole number is three I want to do that if whole number is less than three I want to do something else else if whole number is bigger than uh, let's say three I want to do completely something else and for every other case which is never going to happen because we covered if it's three if it's less than three or if it's bigger than three we want to do this All right so let's make the bigger one bigger than five so it's going to hit the else only between well only in the values of four or five right because three is here less than three is here and bigger than five so let's say six seven eight nine is here so let's just put some console dot right lines just to show you what kind of values we're going to see so here is less than three here is I am three and over here is bigger than five right so you would say here is like six and up here is uh, two and down 
and over here is just three so i'm not going to put that and over here is going to be either four or five right because bigger than not bigger than or equal to so if we run this the first time it's going to be three right i'm just going to put a whole number here and i'm going to set the value to three just to show you how as we change it the value well the right line will change too so as we run it you see it's three so this runs nothing else and then we continue on right so at the end of our um at the end of our uh after our, our if else statements we continue on okay but having this many forks only one of them got hit and eventually merged back in to continue on so Let's go back here, change this to, let's say, negative 7,000 or 783, not too far. So we run that again. We see this time, we know it's less than 3, right? Less than 3 is this one. Again, it forked and then it merged back in to continue on with the rest of the code, right? So this is really important. So we created these forks, makes our code a bit more, um, I don't know, dynamic depending on the situation it'll do this or that All right let's go and put this to something big so 400 so this should be the bigger than right 4400 is bigger than five and you'll notice again bigger than five right and one last one where we need to do the else would be four or five let's just put four and let's see how it does it and you see I am else, all right? Let me move these ones we don't need to see. And we got everything going, right? So this is the cool part. Anyway, so that should be it for the FL statements. Hopefully you kind of get the idea of it. And later on, we'll add more stuff. Like, share, subscribe, add questions. It'd be my pleasure to answer you guys. See you in the next video.